that the youths are leaders of tomorrow is nothing but a myth. However, in 2022 elections, we just showed that the, lead, the youths are ripe, we are ready, and we are taking it home. Honorable Bill Odhiambo, an independent candidate of Kobura Ward, has more to tell us. Moshimiwa, I would love to congratulate you for the seat. Thank you. Thank how you. does it feel? Tombie, how do you feel taking the seat? Um, first, I want to thank you guys for calling me. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, it feels good. It feels good to be the leader of Kobura Ward. And being that it comes to the responsibility, I feel so obligated to serve. So I have to work hard for my people. Mm. That is how I feel. That is how you feel. Yeah. So were you always a leader, even in your childhood, Ama Kuli and Daj? Um... I've always loved leadership positions because I feel that uh, you are the change you want to see. You don't have to wait for somebody else because you can wait for somebody to lead you, but then the, the person you wait for to lead you will make lead you to a different direction. Yeah. So I feel if I can do something, let me go for it. Yeah. So back then uh, in primary, when I was in Mvuke Primary School, mm -hmm. that is in Naivasha, I was... Uh, prefect at some level. Uh, from primary I went to high school, Maranda High School. Maranda High School I was a prefect. Yeah, for from uh, from two till from four I was a prefect. Uh, then I went to Mo University. In Mo University I realized that uh, we had a lot of challenges. Mm. And uh, being that being the person that I am, I don't want to see challenges and if I see some challenges, I want to be the person to correct them. So I went there and uh, having seen all the challenges students were facing, I went for the leadership role. Mm -hmm. So there I was elected uh, as the student leader and uh, I was the secretary general of Mo University student uh, organization. Mm, that's nice. After that, uh, I came home. I started farming. And the farming in Kobura, what I realized that uh, it is the economic activity that most, most people are doing there. Mm. And if I wanted to empower these people, that is the first point I have to touch. Mm. So empowering these people, at times you can't empower when you, are, you don't have anything to support them with. Mm. So I went for this position because I realized that is the point where I can bring change. Mm. That is where I went to, uh, that is when I decided come for the Kobura Ward seat mm -hmm. yeah, because I wanted to address the challenges that are there. Mm -hmm. Yes. And did you feel like it was a risk you were taking joining the Kenyan politics? Um, uh, yeah, it is a risk because you're in politics you can win, you can lose. Mm -hmm. But uh, with me, I've never looked at, uh, I, I always see things on the positive side. Okay. Yeah, that is where, when I decided to go for it. Because I believed if somebody else can do it, I also can do it. Yeah, yeah that is what pushed me forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. I marvel at the fact that you won using an, an independent ticket against one supported by a big party. Yeah. So uh, that you have to have what it takes. Yeah. How did you tell us more about it. I was in, uh, I was in ODM. Mm. I was uh, one of the candidates during the nominations, but uh, the results that came mm. were not something that, okay, it was not something that I expected. Okay. But something strange happened because you realize these people, they had so much hope in me. They told me that you are not leaving this thing here. Mm. And they told me, if you decide to leave this thing here, we are going to elect another person. So it meant these people had the trust mm -hmm. and the, all their hopes were here. So because people are the, people vote, you yeah. don't have parties that vote, yeah. you have people who vote. So because they told me we will be with you to the last point and uh, 
after the elections I can say that it was true. They were with me. They worked with me all through. Yeah. On that note, uh, this is a journey of faith. Yeah. When you were in Ambiwa, yeah. You had decided, ah, neza kosa kuendelea, ama niendele. Yeah. But your people told you, endelea. Did you have a specific mentor when you kushikilia mkono wakakwambia, this is a good decision, go for it? Um, uh, from that point, mm. I realized, being that people showed that they were in this, they guided me a lot. Mm. Because uh, immediately, mm. after nominations, Okay, I went home. Home was full. Home was full. Mm. One thing that came out from that is that these people, they wanted to own everything. They were like sending a message. They told me if it is resources that it acquired Shida, mm. we are willing to sponsor your campaigns. You know, that is a, a strong statement from people who are at the same level like you, people who don't have resources, but the little that they have, they want to invest in your campaigns. It happened that immediately, them talking there, they they, they, they agreed. In fact, they, they fueled some vehicle and uh, hired some uh, public address system and told me, Zunguka, Ward Mzima, telling people that you are still yes. in the race. Um, so, you know, them doing that, it showed that they, they are going to be with me. Yes. So that is something that, okay, they were my mentors. As much as I have other mentors from other places, some politicians, and yeah, but largely everything came from the people. Mm -hmm. This was, it was a people's thing. Yeah. yeah. I noticed you were going door to door before yeah. party or Gary, before they fueled for you that you went door to door yeah. seeking for that seat. Yeah. How did that experience? How was that experience? Being that Kobura Ward is big, it was challenging because for one, the resources you have, you must have resources. You must have a strong team. So I tried my best to have that strong team. And initially, I was campaigning using my uh, my, my motorbike. Mm -hmm. I was campaigning using my using my motorbike. You organize for meetings, and if people are set, you go. But the challenge was resources now. Because the Kenyan system, okay, uh, we have believed that we, ele we should be electing people with money. But for my case, I didn't have that money. Because all the money I had, maybe after college, everything I had, I invested in agriculture. So you realize, before you get to your returns, you are in campaigns. So I was campaigning largely on uh, faith. Like Sikwana <laughs> Chochote. I had to sell my vision strongly. So walking door to door, something that I had to ensure was that, are these people getting the message? Because that was key in a campaign without resources. You have to inspire people now. Let them believe that you are the solution. So, being that I was part of them and I've lived there for some time, and I know the challenges being that I'm a farmer in Kobura, I knew all the challenges people are facing. So, it, selling my agenda was not that uh, difficult because I was with the people always and I understood every challenges they had. So walking door to door, the challenge, the only, the only challenge we had was resources because as, at times you, you, you organize for a meeting of 50 people and you end up meeting 600 to 1,000 people. So chai, <laughs> you, you have to like, like rethink. Yeah. yeah, but uh, I always tried my best to talk to them and tell them that I don't have much, mm -hmm. but the little I have, just accept it. Mm -hmm. So it was a campaign of faith. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what would you say motivated your supporters to yeah. Um. Uh, okay, in politics, okay, maybe say, let, let me say Kobura word. You know, people come. Mm -hmm. uh, during campaigns, people come from Nairobi, people come from other places to come and campaign there. But being that these people, they were seeing me always. Kitoka kwa shamba, with my tomatoes, with some blue overall, I'm going to sell my tomatoes in town. So they identified with me, like I was one of them. Nikona pikipiki, all the pikipiki guys, they identified with me. Who ni mojawetu? Nikona nyanya zangu, all the farmers identified with me. Because some of the farmers, when you look now, I, 
ended up looking for markets for them. Because personally, okay, I did something in uh, my college, I did uh, business stuff. So looking for a market is not an issue for me. So having that market, now none some other farmer and asumbukana could after market with good prices. Nilikuwa chukua other farmers, their products na pelekea uko, so that at least wainuke uh, juu. So this inspired most of them. And they felt that I, like I was one of them. So that is why most of them could easily interact with me and identify with me. Okay. Yeah. And uh, did you ever have this challenge where watu kuna wale ambao wanakuona huyu ni mkulima atatusaidia he's not a politician he doesn't have that language. Yeah. How did you navigate such? What came out mm. is that most of them were seeing me as a young man. In fact, I ended up using what they were saying to my advantage. Walianza that brand kijana mdogo hataweza kijana mdogo kijana mdogo. Now I started using kijana mdogo. Mm -hmm. Nikawa any place to end kijana mdogo. So it was a brand saying what some people alianza thinking that it will thwart my ambitions, but it ended up building me. Because that kijana mdogo in identify na youths. Mm -hmm. That kijana mdogo in identify na wamama. Because they wanajua wamesomesha watoto wao these people are jakuwa employed kuna kijana mdogo anajaribu hapa afike at some point so wa mama na youths they supported me fully mm. because wana walikuwa naona chenye that guy is experiencing hakuna kazi ameanza kutafuta kazi zake mwenyewe ameanza kufanya activities zake mwenyewe wakai identify na watoto wao yani wakai relate na watoto wao yeah. because most people say there unemployment is an issue Going back, at, in at least every home, kuna somebody, some youth, ajapata kazi. So, they felt the pain. And uh, wakaingilia these campaigns fully. So, that is the challenge nilikuwa naona. Uh, in fact, some competitors, wenye nilikuwa nao, walikuwa nasema, yule kijana ni mdogo, mkimpatia kazi, atenda Dubai, atenda siju kupotea na watu gani. Yeah, so, being that that was there, I had to have a strong agenda. Yeah that in the overcome all that. Mm -hmm. So Mimi Pia Nika ensure we branded ourselves, uh, our team well, mm -hmm. so that anything you could do, what to do is a different thing. Mm -hmm. So opponent Takisema, Uki Jana Kijana Mdogo, our team was not, uh, we, we, we didn't decampaign anybody. It mm -hmm. selling our agenda. So somebody and the campaign Uku Mimi Nika and Atasi Mongeli, mm -hmm. my agenda. Yes. And people bought that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, in this farming, what kind of farming were you involved in? Let me tell you, okay, I'm going farming. Mm. After college, you're educated. Lafu, you know, the society sees you differently. They want direction from you. So I had to be a good example. Funny enough, I can get in farming, and it's something I love. So I went to open field farming. Nilikuwa na panda nyanya na omba shamba ya watu na panda nyanya. But then nikapata there are a lot of challenges there. So every amount, every cent nilikuwa na pata, I saved. From that point, nika enda at least a bit higher. Nika ingia kwa greenhouse farming sasa. Mm -hmm. So that nione, if that can give me more money compared to open field farming. And uh, yeah, ilini kidogo. And at least I, it's like I gave people direction. They saw something in me. I want to change my area, and most people they come visiting and are tembeza na onyesha. This is how you do it. Come my open field. I was doing some uh, tomatoes. Three months you are harvesting, but for greenhouse, your tomato when I harvest for around six months. Mm -hmm. So now that is there's a, there's some difference there. Yeah. So they saw something there. So agriculture. Naipenda. Mm. It's something that I always advise people to do. Mm. So when I tomato farming, at some point I did watermelon farming. So easy in my greenhouse, I have onions. Speaking of resources, Zulisema Ukianza, you had little or no resources. Yeah. But in the Kenyan political campaigns, unona handouts ndio zinapewa kwa wingi. Yeah. And so how did you navigate that being a youth na unataka kuingia kwenye kiti cha MCA? I think uh, as youths, mm. 
okay, the society already it has moved to uh, some direction. If you have that strong agenda, you will realize that you'll get following. People will not uh, like uh, vote you because of the amount of money you give you give them. Because for my case, my opponents, nearly everybody had money. But uh, I also used that. Okay, it's just strategy because I used that to my advantage. Because most people, we are at the same level. People don't have that money. A few individuals have money, some extra cash to use in politics. So I used that to my advantage. So whenever I go to campaign, I tell people, like, uh, I don't have money. What I have is a strong agenda that will move your move our world to another step. So they bought that. So if somebody else came with cash, uh, there was something in Luo, it was called Yuko Jamna. Mm. I told them, you guys go Yuko Jamna, okay. but come back and vote here. <laughs> so that is what happened. Okay. You go and Yuko Jamna there and you come back to vote uh, the right direction. Mm. Yeah. So it's just having a strong agenda and people will not see you as a youth or somebody old or something else. Mm -hmm. They'll just stick to that agenda. If uh, somebody asks them, you'll, they'll just say he wants to do this, this and that. Yeah. That is nice strategic management. <laughs> and um, so, you being a youth, what, what do you think uh, uh, has changed the perspectives of the youth in terms of politics? Because Kitambo youths wana sema, mimi siyezi vote, mimi siyezi ingilia politics because of such and such reasons. But here you are in politics and you are advocating for youths to take up such seats. What do you think the perspective is? Um... Uh... I think I think youths have started to realize that uh, they can also lead because uh, we were always told that uh, we are the leaders of tomorrow. Tomorrow is here. Mm. You can't wait for tomorrow. You get told you're still waiting for tomorrow. This is the right age to start taking these positions because if you look at the poli okay, most politicians, even the veteran politicians now, they started when they were youths. So this is the right time for any youth. Don't wait for somebody or wait for at some point you'll get money to use in politics. Just have a strong agenda and go for mm. it. So I'm, I'm trying to imagine here you are, a young person having your agenda. And here is a big name that has the money, has the political language, but you still took that seat. How did that make you feel as a youth? Um, uh, okay, I was not surprised. Mm. I was not surprised because... The effort that we put in the campaigns, we were like of around 60% sure that we were going to win. Okay. Because we had meetings, always. From morning uh, 8, I was meeting people till late. Like I was not resting. Like if somebody went to look for me at home, I was not there. I was in the field looking for votes. I was looking for farmers. I was looking for women groups. I was looking for youth groups. So I think in the last minute, I had uh, like mapped my ward and I knew this location I'm going to get around 70%. This location I'm going to get around 80%. So in our strategies, that is how we planned it. And it came out exactly that. So uh, having that strong strategy, we were sure that we are going to win. Because we addressed some challenges people were having and we know after addressing ch some challenges, you realize that people will vote you because they, they, are, they want somebody who can be, somebody who can solve their problems. And that is how we campaigned. The problems that we were about, we, were, we could solve, we solved them. Some of them that uh, maybe required a lot of resources and required somebody to be in a position, we told people, uh, this, we are going to do it after office. Yes. Okay. So we were sure we were going to win. And now that you're the MCA, let's get to the crack of it. What yeah. plans do you have for Kobura? Um, uh, looking at Kisumu County, mm. Kobura Ward is strategically placed because after politics, you realize that uh, at least now people are investing in Kisumu. So Kisumu is expanding. And uh, where Kobura Ward is, if you look at it, you realize that most factories have started to be to be operational in that area. I want to empower my people so that we don't just sell land because people are coming to buy land. I don't want them to be squatters. So I have to empower them economically. 
and the main economic activity there is that uh, everybody, nearly everybody is, is a farmer there. So that farming, I want to ensure that rice farming that is there, we take it to another level. Like more rice, we want Kobura rice to have some name. So that at least if you go to the supermarket, you get Kobura rice on the shelves. Yeah. So that we compete with at least with more rice. Competing with uh, more rice will give these people, uh, will empower them. Because we realize that their rice will be sold at higher prices. And that will reflect in uh, everything that they are doing even at home. Because empowering them will at least empower everybody in the village. So I want to empower them using agriculture. And the factories that are coming will negotiate with them so that at least people from my ward get opportunities. Because we have a big number of youths. We have a big number of uh, women that don't have employment. So that is what, what I want to create through agriculture and the factories that are there and uh, promote education also. So these are some of the things that I know if I do for my people, my word will be a good word. Yeah. You, there's one agenda you had about planning to upgrade an early childhood development education yeah. with a fully funded uh, feeding program for the children. Yeah. Kindly speak more about that. If you want a society to grow, you have to invest in education. Uh, because if somebody, you'll realize the kind of the kind of thinking that this person has is a thinking that can grow people. So we have to empower people. And empowering people, I have to invest in ECD because that is where I should focus on. So that these people get the good get good education, they get resources, they got get good classrooms that will encourage learning. After that, I have to empower the the learners. At least, mtu akitoka nyumbani, akiwa kwa shule, ako sure that anapata chakula. Yeah, that is what I want to do. So that the parents of uh, their parents don't get that to, to struggle, that mtoto atarudi kufaa nini, atarudi kukula nini. Mm -hmm. So that they are sure, mtoto atakula kwa shule, they go ahead with other activities. Mm -hmm. So, I believe doing that, uh, people will love education, and that is what I want, so that we get a maximum from my word going to school. Uh, we have seen the, these agendas that politicians give out to the community before being elected, but after they've been elected, they be themselves on a journey, you know and our taki to associate with the community. What plans do you have to put for the community to put you in check so that you can attain these agendas? Um, uh, we have a team from all corners uh, of Kubura. That team, their work is to tell me what is happening, all the challenges that are there, so that I don't lose touch with uh, my voters. Another thing, the challenges, I'll also interact with the voters because my, I'm not the kind of person that after being, being voted in, you, you go away. So I'll interact with people. I'll visit people from all corners so that I know the challenges, I address the challenges. And in my agenda, if there's something that I know will delay, I'll just go to the people and tell them, we planned this together and at this point, there we might have some delays. Even the voters, uh, the electorates, there are people who listen. If you tell them this can't happen now, but we can do this, they'll listen. But I'll try my best to ensure that we do everything that we promised. We do uh, at least 80% if we can't do 100. Okay. So that they see something different from other leaderships. And uh, being that I'm a young man, and I still have dreams. I'll be with the people to the last minute mm -hmm. because they are the same people that will elect me in other positions. So I have to be with them. We have to experience the challenges together and address them together. Mm -hmm. Yes. And now as a whole, you as a young person, 
are there any plans for the young people in your community and your generation as large? Um, uh, for the young people, me included, the plans I have for them, uh, I'll empower them, just empowering them. Because you realize that uh, they are in groups. You realize that they, are, they have some common agenda that they are pushing at their own levels. I'll get in that so that if there's a way I can help them, go up and help them. Because there are resources we can get for them. And that is what I want to do, so that I empower them. Uh, after five years, I can say that I met this group and uh, they were doing this. And at least now they are in level three. That is my happy, that is what will make me happy. And all the groups, I have their contacts. All the women groups, I have their contacts. It is a matter of uh, going back to them and discussing things with them. Everything that we can do together, we will do. So that is the plan I have. So that we don't have people who are not empowered. Because after you have empowered somebody, you realize that that same person can empower somebody else. That is so nice. So in the long run, yeah. what can you tell the youths and someone out there looking at you like, Uko 29 na MCA, what can you tell them as a last word na kitu ingeni ungefenda kuongeza? There's nothing that is not achievable. As long as you stay true to your course, you stay, you stay focused, there's nothing you can't achieve. It's only that people believe that you must have this and that. But we, there's a power within. If you unleash that power within you, you realize that you can get to places. Mm -hmm. It's only that we've always believed that I can't do this because of this. That because of this part is the part you should do away with. Mm -hmm. And you realize that you can achieve anything. Because for me, my case, I was working against so many odds. First, I was an independent, uh, independent candidate against strong parties. Secondly, I'm a youth. Resources is an issue to some youths. It was an issue to me too. Um, uh, all that, if I looked at that, singe fika malime fika. But I knew all that was there. But nikasema, we are going forward. So the idea is, go forward. Zingine mm -hmm. is because at some point in my campaigns you realize some people joined because they saw the vision is a strong vision. Mm -hmm. People started joining Mungina na kwambia let me support you today Mungina I support you tomorrow to the last minute. Mm -hmm. So just stay focused. If you believe you can do it you can. I am motivated by your story and the yeah. fact that many of there is power in me. Yeah. I am challenged. Santi sana kufika uko. As you have seen and heard there is a power in you. You just have to stay focused. Na uende mbele. Usione mbele kuna kikwazo, there is a mountain, there is big something that you cannot come across. No. Enda mbele, you will get the supporters, you will get the motivators, you will get the mentors. Just believe in yourself. Na usonge mbele. This has been Youth in Action. I am Nyangweso Grenis. This is the way to do it.